Now I've switched over on my bench to a System 11N MPU that I use for testing all kinds of things. This one's got Whirlwind ROMs in it, but it really doesn't matter which game ROMs are in it. It's the same setup. The special solenoid trigger switches come in on this connector and the special solenoid drives go out here. I've uh, jammed a ground wire or a path to ground wire into the lower connector and it's driven by Q79. And I have a Williams slingshot coil connected to only 20 volt DC power. Now, normally that would be connected to whatever it is in a system 11, 50 or 70 volts, I don't remember. And I can drive that coil by pressing this special solenoid trigger switch. You'll see it lock on here. Now that coil is gonna be driven on just as long as I press the switch. Just a momentary press, which is the way the designers meant it to work in a real game. Uh, in, in the sunny day scenario, when everything's working correctly, a ball hits a slingshot switch, it closes uh, the gap to ground, the slingshot fires and pushes the ball away from the switches and the gap to ground is opened up. So in a real game, it's just very, very quick. Now, if something goes wrong, like we talked about earlier, like if this is a, uh, a pop bumper spoon switch that got outside of the, the spoon and it was just sitting on the lip, which I've you, you may have seen before, I've seen it many, many times before, or a ball gets stuck under a slingshot kicker, then this switch is stuck closed, and this is what's going to happen. Now, I'm not going to let this go too long because I value my boards too much, but as that coil is engaged, the windings on this coil get hotter and hotter, and eventually the coating between the wires burns off, causes shorts within the coil, reduces resistance in the coil, makes the coil get hotter, and it's a death spiral. And eventually, the resistance of this coil approaches zero or zero. And then this drive transistor in the special solenoid section can't handle it. It's driving a dead short or a, a resistive load that's way below what it should be driving, and it's going to explode. And you've seen many System 11, System 3 through 7, System 9 MPU boards that look worse than this one. This one had some issues similar here uh, in, in the special solenoid section. So that's the way I got it. I repaired it now. But we don't need to, I guess, subject our boards to this kind of mess. So let me install the solution here that I showed you with the system three through six games earlier. So I am going to do this real time. I'm going to put my switch, special solenoids switch interceptor. That's a cool word. On, and then I'm going to, have far too many cables here, but I'm going to route the special solenoids input switches into this interceptor board. And I've already intercepted power up here also. So, let me get this over here. Nothing but the highest production qualities here at Chris Hibbler Pinball. Trying to balance the, not shorting anything out with getting good shots. But, Bear with me as this thing is upside down, but I have the um, the shunt set to the left as this would be mounted in the game. So the enforcement is in full play versus the way it would be if I set it to the right. So now I'm going to press this cell special solenoid switch and I'm gonna hold it in and that's all that happens. That is because this dandy piece of hardware here is accepting the special solenoid switch input, and then it is sending a one-shot pulse out to the coil. And you'll see the yellow LED light up for the switch input and the blue LED light up as the output goes out, the output pulse goes to the coil.
Pretty neat, huh? Now if I hold the switch down, it's still indicating that it's getting a switch closure, but it is not sending a pulse out to the coil. So the scenario that I outlined earlier where the coil heats up and the resistance gets reduced and eventually you end up with a honked up or burned up special solenoid section on your $450 board cannot possibly occur. Now, let me show you this. I, sh I think I showed this in the other game system, but let me show you this uh, on a System 11 system. I'm going to need a third hand. I'm going to hold down this switch as if the switch for that coil is locked on. And then I'm going to power on. Let me see if I can set this down. Yeah, that'll do it. Okay, so the switch is stuck. I'm simulating a, switch, a stuck switch, powering on. First of all, nothing happened. And with that stuck switch closed or the switch closed at power on detected, this device lights the fault LED, the orange one you can see on the right. And it will refuse, let me, uh, let's see, let me get into test again. Again, I need too many hands to do this here. Let me advance. Okay. I'm still holding that button down. And you can see that I'm pressing other special solenoid inputs, but it is not letting any special solenoid outputs go out. Now, if the fault clears, like I just I just uh, let my finger off that button, you've still got uh, an enunciation of a fault. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I shouldn't have those things running at the same time. Let me stop that. Okay. But... Nothing is going out to the solenoids now. See, I'm pressing these buttons. Nothing is going out to the solenoids. What was happening earlier is I was in coil test and it was trying to fire some. Now, if I power cycle with the fault uh, alleviated, then the, the fault light goes out because the fault's no longer there. And if I actuate the special solenoids, it will send the pulse out to that special solenoid. So let me switch the shunt jumper over to the other side and show you what that looks like. I dearly wish my wife could control a camera, but... Okay. So now I'm going to power on. We get into test and we'll see how special solenoids operate and it's the same way as before now the difference is on this is going to be that if a fault is detected at power up so let me do that again and again i gotta put the phone down to simulate this fault at least i'm smarter about what finger to use and the device has detected a fault again since I'm holding the last special solenoid switch down. And you can see the yellow LED is lit, indicating that there's a switch closed. Now, what happens with the, um, the other switches is it will allow switch closures to pulse the special solenoids properly. So this is a way of uh, providing an indication to the operator, uh, yet not taking the game down quite as hard, I guess, as it would have before. Now I've, I've released the switch, and so the fault is gone. And now we're back to normal operation, except for the fault indicator being on there. If I power off and then on again, get back into test, and 
we're back to normal operation. I hope that wasn't too confusing. But this right here is what we're trying to avoid, is that coil, pop bumpers, slingshots, locking on, roasting themselves, and, it's, and the damage never stops there, especially if you're in an arcade where uh, nobody really knows what's going on. In home use, you might be able to avoid this, but if you're, say, your kids are having a party down there and you start seeing smoke coming out, you're probably going to wish you had something like this. Thank you. And I'm going to wrap this video up with other segments now.